3,400 years ago, God revealed Ten Commandments to Moses. Religion soon covered the globe, promising a world of peace and joy. A secret code. What if this code contained the power to transform our world for good? Moses never received a religion on Mount Sinai. The Ten Commandments and even the Bible itself are actually coded documents. The key that unlocks this ancient code is the Zohar, the most important book of Kabbalah. As we're about to discover, the Zohar had a decisive impact on both science and religion, deeply influencing history makers such as Abraham, Jesus, Mohammed, Newton, and others. The Zohar was first revealed some 2,000 years ago by the greatest Kabbalist of history, Rav Shimon Bar Yochai. But it remained hidden for 1,200 years until it emerged from obscurity in Spain in the 13th century. The sages of Kabbalah recognized the Zohar as the soul of the Bible the guardian of its most sublime secrets. But in ancient times, it was thought to be a bewildering book of mysticism. Just imagine trying to explain the concept of a computer a few centuries ago. You'd be called a mystic, a heretic, mad. The fact is, the Zohar is a book of profound power. It's a book of science, a book of miracles, a book of life but it dealt with concepts that were thousands of years ahead of their time. When science was convinced the earth was flat, the Zohar said, The whole world rolls around like a ball, so that some people are above and some are below. In the time of Columbus, scientists thought only two continents existed. Twenty centuries earlier, the Zohar said, there exist seven major geographical continents, but it is not yet known to those who mark out geographical boundaries. Two thousand years before medical science discovered the relationship between heart disease, the liver, and cholesterol, the Zohar stated, From the liver emerges the bile, from which come bitter drops to kill human beings. Bile overcomes the arteries of the heart, and all the arteries in the limbs of the body. Medical science now tells us that bile's primary component is cholesterol. Only recently did science identify two kinds of cholesterol and fat, known as good fats and bad fats. The Zohar revealed this medical truth 2,000 years earlier. In the body, there are pure and impure fatty parts, clean blood without waste matter, and blood contaminated with waste matter. The Zohar ventured into the realm of physics. This ancient book said our universe existed in ten dimensions. They were called ten spherot. A radical notion, to say the least. But once again, modern-day science now confirms what the Zohar revealed so many centuries ago. 
The universe we live in actually consists in ten dimensions. Physicist Michio Kaku. After being introduced to the Zohar's basic ideas about creation, Kaku stated, It's eerie how the magic numbers of physics and the unified field theory are found in the Zohar. The Zohar said our physical world is merely a shadow of these higher dimensions. While our world may be caught up in chaos and madness, it represents only 1% of absolute reality. The remaining 99% is found in these hidden dimensions. The 99% is the source of all our wisdom, our joy, our healing, even our creativity. When Paul McCartney woke up with the song Yesterday playing in his mind, McCartney was touching the 99%. Mozart said he could perceive an entire symphony in his mind in just a split second. Mozart said he transcended our ordinary world of time and space and entered into another reality. This other reality is the 99%. When we experience moments of happiness, times of pleasure, flashes of intuition, we've made contact with the 99% reality. The Zohar is that awesome instrument of power that connects us to the unseen 99%. How does this happen? The simple possession of the Zohar confuses one with spiritual nourishment and enlightenment. Merely gazing at its sacred letters turns on an astonishing light that removes darkness and despair from our lives. Forever. The Zohar exposed the biggest misconception of religion, the idea of Ten Commandments. The phrase Ten Commandments is really a code for the Ten Dimensions. This is the 99% reality that overflows with infinite spiritual energy. Perhaps this is why the greatest minds of history passionately sought it out. The influence of the Zohar goes back thousands of years. In ancient Greece, Plato spoke about a hidden reality he called the world of ideas. This higher world was the source of all wisdom. Our physical world was simply a shadow of this hidden realm. Sound familiar? Seventeen centuries later, Sir Isaac Newton said Plato obtained his ideas from the Zohar and the Kabbalists who were dwelling in Egypt at the time. Sir Isaac wrote, Plato, traveling to Egypt, learnt there his metaphysical opinions, which he calls ideas, and which the Kabbalists call spirot. The renowned philosopher Henry Moore was Isaac Newton's teacher. Moore and all his peers agreed that Plato's wisdom was derived from the pure Kabbalah transmitted to Moses on Sinai. During the Renaissance, the Zohar dramatically inspired the great Christian philosophers and scientists, Isaac Newton being the greatest. Scholars were shocked when they discovered that Newton actually wrote more about Kabbalah and mysticism than he did about science. Newton was led to the discovery of the law of attraction and repulsion by his studies of the Kabbalah. This is Newton's personal copy of the Zohar. It is still archived at Trinity College in Cambridge. French scholar Serge Houghton said the Zohar had a profound effect on Newton's theories of space and time. He even calls Newton a Christian Kabbalist. Next to gravity, Newton's greatest discovery was that white light contained all the colors of the rainbow. 
What led Newton to this historic finding? Remarkably, the Zohar states, Colors blend with each other, except for the white color in which all are incorporated. Wilhelm Leibniz invented calculus and has been hailed as the father of the modern day computer. Leibniz was enamored with the Zohar. In fact, this mathematical genius often spoke about his plans for a learned society that would combine Kabbalah, calculus, mysticism, and mechanics. Leibniz, Newton, and the foremost Christian philosophers of the Renaissance believed in a concept they called Prisca Theologia. Prisca Theologia was defined as a secret hidden wisdom given to Moses. They all believed that this hidden wisdom had the spiritual power to create harmony between Christians and Jews, unify all people, and create a true heaven on earth, if it could only be rediscovered. Scholar Alison Coderre says the most enlightened minds of the Renaissance looked to the Zohar for the elusive Prisca Theologia. Kabbalistic writings represented the first and purest source of that divine knowledge. The Kabbalistic wisdom of the Zohar offered nothing less than a blueprint of utopia. Paracelsus is the father of modern medicine. Encyclopedia Britannica says he established the role of chemistry in medicine. Columbia Encyclopedia says the scientific revolution begins with the work of Paracelsus. So what does the father of modern day medicine write? All of you who teach so much wisdom, remember that you must take unto yourselves the teachings of the Kabbalah if you want to accomplish all this. Most recently, there was a startling revelation made about the secret teachings of Jesus found in the Gospel of Thomas. In her best-selling book, Beyond Belief, author Elaine Pagels demonstrates that the lost teachings of Jesus are remarkably similar to the Kabbalistic wisdom found in the Zohar. In the 15th century, Pope Sixtus IV had himself translated 70 Kabbalistic books into Latin. 1559, the Roman Inquisition. Pope Paul IV ordered the burning of the Talmud, the Koran, and other religious works. As 12,000 books were becoming ashes, this same Pope authorizes the first ever printing of the Zohar. Kabbalist Isaac de Latte was instrumental in the printing of the first Zohar. He noted that during the Inquisition, the Church did not harm the Kabbalists. Furthermore, he believed the fact that the Church authorized the publication of the Zohar was proof they sought to remove the hatred and intolerance that existed between Jew and Christian. Renowned historian Dr. Israel Zinberg noted how the Catholic Church actually played a vital role in the spreading of the Kabbalah throughout Europe. The Prophet Muhammad wrote about the Zohar in the Quran, referring to it as the Book of Abraham, which he held in the highest esteem. Historian and renowned scholar of the Dead Sea Scrolls, Professor Robert Eisenman states, The New Testament the Quran and the Dead Sea Scrolls are all heirs to and permeated with the imagery and traditions conserved in the Zohar. <laughs>